Hello, my name is Sarah Hagen, and this is WVVH, Hamptons Television. I'm here today with Laura Bowery of Sierra Incorporated. She has a lovely stable, which is located on the Two Trees Farm in Bridgehampton, New York. Today we will be discussing the preparation that goes into the Hampton Classic and the months of training that leads up to this major event. We will be looking at the preparation in the stable, we will be looking at the preparation in the field, and ultimately what happens once you've dismounted. This year marks the 32nd annual Hampton Classic Horse Show. Today we will be discussing the preparations needed to compete in a demanding Grand Prix event. I am here with local rider Laura Bowery of Sierra Incorporated. She owns and operates a lovely private stable which is located at the very well-known Two Trees Farm in Bridgehampton. Miss Bowery is a United States equestrian team veteran and a competitive Grand Prix rider. She plans to compete in this year's $150,000 Hampton Classic Grand Prix. So tell me, Ms. Bowery, how long have you been involved with this local event? Um, I've been competing at this horse show for about 12 years. 12 years? That's wonderful. And as a young equestrian, whom did you idolize? Definitely Joe Farges, um, Ann Krasinski, uh, Michael Matz is one of my idols who is now, um, I'm sure you all know, he's a very well-known race, race horse trainer. Um, he had the lovely horse Barbara who died, but mm -hmm. um, so those are my idols. That's nice. Um, and not only as a trainer and a Grand Prix rider, what horse shows would you say really prepare your horses, your students, and yourself for the Hampton Classic event? Um, it's interesting because I don't know if there is a horse show that prepares you for the Hampton Classic. Um, so many of the shows that we compete in during the year are on all-weather footing or sand. Um, I'm fortunate that I have a grass field here. Um, the Hampton Classic is so unique. But what I really like to do is go to a horse show that's a little bit difficult, a little bit imposing. Um, and then other than that, like I said, I have a great facility here, so I just train mostly at home. It's nice that you have this nice facility to work with. Um, what would you say it is about the Hampton Classic that you look forward to most? I just love the horse show. Um, I'm very involved with, with the show, and being that it's in my backyard, um, it's just, I don't know, it's a wonderful horse show. I think horses in general jump incredibly well there. Um, the footing is generally very good. The jumps are beautiful. The courses are amazing. Conrad Homefeld is one of my favorite course designers. Um, so it's just an event that we all get really excited for. That's great. Um, and now I've always had an understanding that preparation for competing, preparation for training, really begins here in the stable. Can you go over some of the tack and equipment that you choose to put on your horses to really have the proper communication with them? Sure. Um, first and foremost, the care and well-being of the horse is paramount to me. I have an incredible staff um, who they make sure that my horses are comfortable and, and uh, well looked after, a blacksmith, mm -hmm. great grooms, but making sure they're really fit, making sure they have a a good diet. We have a nutritionist for our horses. Um, so that's where it starts for me, um, right here in the stable. And then the equipment comes second. So um, making sure that they're really happy animals is very important. That's great. What will you be riding your Grand Prix horse in today for us? Um, I'm going to be riding my mare Polona, um, and she will be going in what's called a two-ring happy mouth <laughs> uh, bit. It is a very mild bit, um, but it has a little bit of leverage. So she, she doesn't get strong, but she puts her head up a little bit. So it's a bit that keeps her head down a little bit. So That's nice. And we also have some other um, tack here that you choose to use on your other horses. And maybe if Paluna's having a different kind of day, you might put on her. Exactly. Can you elaborate? 
This is my favorite bit to practice in. It's just a de-snaffle. It's a very smooth, soft bit on the horse's mouth. And that's pretty much what I use every day. I never train in their show bridle. Usually the show bridle is, the bit is a little stronger. Um, I like to um, save that. I like to save that bit for the horse shows so it has a little more of an effect. So that's just a really easy bit. This is a gag bit, which I also use often. It has a pulley here, and it gives you a little more leverage, and it picks the horse's head up. So a horse who's very heavy, this is a great bit. And then this is a pelham. It's actually a broken rubber pelham. And it's just, again, a little bit of leverage. Um, it has two reins and a curb chain, which gives you a little more control. Can you please elaborate on some of the other equipment that you've chosen to use on your horses in the past and possibly something that you'll be using today? Sure. Um, it's really important when you're jumping, especially, to have protective leg wear. Um, the horse's tendon, the back of its leg, is very delicate. So I use, for practice, I use what's called a polo bandage, which covers the whole front of the leg from the bottom of the knee down to the ankle. It gives them support and protection if they should hit a jump or um, trip and you know bang their leg or something. So this is really important in practice. For showing, I like to use what's called an open front galloping boot. Um, it's, this one is actually very nice because it has fleece, which is more comfortable for the horse. It is open in front. It gives support down the back of the leg, which is the tendon and the suspensory, but it's open so that if the horse should hit a jump, they'll know that they hit a jump. Mm -hmm. Not that it will hurt them, but they'll know they hit a jump in terms of if you use a polo bandage, it's a lot of padding. Yeah. So for competition, I like to use this because obviously the, the objective is to not hit the jump. So this gives them support, protection, comfort but it leaves the front of the leg open. Ulti ultimately makes them a little sharper while they're exactly. jumping. This is just a open front fleece boot. This is the same boot, but it's leather. A lot of horses are very sensitive, so depending on the horse, if I use fleece or I use a, a boot like this, which has neoprene in the middle. Um, this is a little more involved. This is a very sturdy support wrap. It's got a little more elastic to it. Um, horses who've had injuries in the past to their tendon or suspensory, it gives them a little more support. Mm -hmm. um, so this is something that we use on horses who need a little extra support. That's great. And then the last is the bell boot. Um, it's a very, very common injury for a horse to overreach, mm -hmm. which is when their hind leg comes to their front leg and sort of grabs them. So, and that could be sort of not a serious injury, but it could set you back for a week or two. So we use bell boots to protect the back of their ankle, the coronary bend. Yes, it's a very common tool used for prevention. And the cocks? And then these are very important for show jumping on the grass. Um, these are called cocks or studs. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes, and my blacksmith, Dave Birdsall, who is amazing, um, he drills holes in the horse's shoe so that we can screw these in. Depending on the footing, if it's really muddy, we go with a really big cock. Um, for nice footing, we use a smaller cock. And these ultimately give a little more traction. Exactly. They're cleats, basically. Um, there is a disadvantage um, in using cocks because a lot of times if the footing is a little bit muddy and you have too big a cock, the horse can stick. Mm. Um, so you have to be really selective with your cocks. Um, so this is a very important part of our equipment. Absolutely. Once again, a great selection of equipment to choose from for any given day. Yes. All right, well, we are going to wander down and take a look at Polona, who is being tacked up right now, and we will be making our way out to the fields.
we are out here in your gorgeous uh, Grand Prix grass field. And um, I've just always had an understanding that even if you're going to be competing at your level of competition, you really have to emphasize the fundamentals, the, the smaller jumps and the gymnastics before you can even think about entering a Grand Prix competition. Can you elaborate on some of the exercises that you do with these horses? Sure, absolutely. It's really important that your horse is not only a good jumper but is very well schooled on the flat. Um, gymnastics are a great exercise for getting horses fit, using their jumping muscles, but not necessarily jumping too big. Um, you don't want to practice jumping big fences because obviously it, it takes a toll on them. So gymnastics are a great way to get the horse relaxed, get them jumping fit, and it's also a great exercise for young riders, um, green horses, because it's a an exercise that the distance is generally set up very comfortable for the horse and rider. Um, it's a great place to work on your position as a rider and just a time for the horse to relax and you know use his muscles but not over jumping. Here we have the gymnastic jump that Laura was referring to. It really is a beneficial exercise for both riders at the beginner level and riders at the Grand Prix level. It really teaches the horse to be careful and to jump on its own. A lot of riders make the mistake of trying to jump for the horse and encouraging the horse over the jump. And this exercise is just a brilliant way to let them know that they have to get over the jump by themselves. out here you have quite the variation of jumps. Are there any particular jumps that really require more attention or more practice um, that, that might be more challenging to the horse before you enter uh, the ring? Sure. Um, the water jump, especially at the Hampton Classic, is, is generally a problem. Mm -hmm. We don't generally get to practice that much during the year on a field like the Hampton Classic on grass with such beautiful jumps. Uh, the water jump is definitely a challenging fence because it, it's very wide. It's about 12, 12 feet. Um, it's very spooky. Um, if the sun is on it a certain way, it could really kind of concern the horse. And generally, it's a, what I call a power jump where you need a lot of pace, a little bit of speed, and then it's usually followed by something that's what we call careful. Um, Again, there's power jumps and then there's careful jumps. So the water, if your horse is a great water jumper, that's fine. But then after it is usually where the problem comes, a, a very careful, delicate jump. Also, the combinations, the triple combinations, the doubles um, are always a little bit challenging. Again, that's where your flat work and your gymnastic work comes in, that the horse is very adjustable. Now, competing in this event, you've been doing it for, you know, tons of years now. Um, is there any one thing that Conrad does each year that really stands out in your mind that you know you have to prepare for and that you really gear up towards? Yes. <laughs> um, Conrad is an amazing course designer, um, and he always, a good course designer to me is someone who asks all the questions of the horse and rider without hurting them. Um, that it's technical, that it's careful, meaning a little bit delicate, that it's big enough so you need a power horse. But I think he's just so brilliant in that he always 
ask you to go forward to something and then really show the adjustability in the horse. My most difficult jump is the white swoop jump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it's a very delicate jump. It's a very careful jump and usually he puts it after something that requires a lot of power. That looks pretty beautiful to me, Laura. Um, do you want to reflect on how the jumps felt, how the triple bar felt? Sure. Um, she felt great. Um, she's a bit fresh, um, which means she's just kind of raring to go. Um, but I like that. She's really game and wanting to go to the jumps. Uh, I really liked how she jumped the triple bar, which is a very wide jump, and then came back for that swoop jump, um, which I don't usually like. Um, and she was really good. She has a little bit, she can be a little bit timid at the water. Um, she was great at the water, and then she came back beautifully for the tight verticals. Um, so that's a test that Conrad will always give um, in the Grand Prix. Um, again, a big power test, the water, the triple bar, and then something that's very delicate, like the double verticals or the swoop jump. So I'm very happy with um, how she jumped today. Yes, she seemed very responsive. That's great. All right, well, we're going to head back into the stable and talk about some preventative measures that are taken once you have dismounted. Here we have Barbara Calabro, Laura's main go-to girl about everything here at the barn, pretty much. Pretty and much. we were kind of hoping that you could tell us a little bit about the rest of the team. We have Laura's two dogs that just follow her everywhere. Yeah. This is Otto. Hi, Otto. How's it going? And Wiley. And Wiley's looking for his mom right now. They're a little sad that she's not in the office today. Yes, they go everywhere with us. They go to the horse shows. And they'll stay. We have them lay down in the tack room. And they'll be there when we get back from the ring. They're amazing dogs. Amazing show dogs. Just hang out all day. It's a great life. So now that we have dismounted and you demonstrated a beautiful Grand Prix practice ride out there in the field, we are inside with your other Grand Prix horse, Indy Star, 
who is a real champ, and he, he's proven that throughout the years. Um, and there are a lot of preventative measures that need to be taken after you've dismounted and once you're back in the stable. And if you could elaborate on this contraption that we have today. Sure. Um, these horses are really incredible athletes. And like any athlete, they need to be taken care of uh, in a very special way. These are two machines that I use before and after a workout. Um, the first one is called the Game Ready Machine. It's ice cold water that goes through this tube and runs down the leg and you can make it extremely cold and it also does a little bit of like a circulation massage um, and as you know ice is cold is very good for bringing down inflammation and uh, any sort of you know swelling or discomfort for a horse this is the equisage it's a simple machine but it's amazing it sends a little bit of a um, current through the whole body. It sort of massages their whole body. Um, and the horses actually love this. They really get relaxed with it. Um, so I use this before and after um, competing and or jumping big jumps. Now is it ever appropriate to bring in uh, chiropractors or acupuncture to their regimen? Absolutely. I have the best team. Um, there's a lot of people that go behind this operation and we have a chiropractor, we have a nutritionist, we have a massage therapist that comes every week. Um, I have amazing vets, an amazing blacksmith, a great team of guys that take care of my horses, and without them I could not be where I am right now. It's wonderful. There are a lot of emotions, obviously, and challenges leading up to this event. Can you describe the emotions that you feel leading up to it, ultimately during that week, and, and when you set foot in that Grand Prix arena? Um, for me, I get a little bit, I don't get nervous, I get excited. Um, there's a lot of anticipation. Again, the over-preparing I try not to do with both myself and my students, keep everyone relaxed. Um, but. There's a pressure that I feel just because I'm the local girl, mm -hmm. but it's a good pressure. Mm -hmm. It's um, I, I've always done very well at this horse show, so um, I get excited. I'm just kind of like, okay, when's the day coming? But not really too much nerves or anything like that. Just it's excited. great, nice and calm. Yeah. Um, have you ever had a challenge or physical, mental roadblock for your horses or yourselves that's come up? right before the classic and really put a damper on the show? Yeah, in the past, actually, um, I think it was about seven years ago, I dislocated my shoulder the day before the Grand Prix. Um, so I couldn't compete and that was a real disappointment because my horses were going really well during the week. Um, but fortunately, I haven't had too many, uh, too mm. many other incidents that week. Um, as far as like mentally, I just try to stay really focused, try to rest, try to, you know, just stay with the plan. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, and as far as students who are trying to get to your level of competition and really want to get out there and show in the Grand Prix level, do you have any recommendations? Who should they be observing? Who should they be learning from? What they can do to improve themselves and their horses? Um, I think that, you know, to be a student of the sport, which is really important in terms of like really watching the great riders, watching Joe Fargis, watching Ann Krasinski, um, watching McLean Ward, and just really working hard. I don't, it doesn't matter how many good horses you have or how much money you have. If you don't study the sport, you'll never make it. And I, I think that that's one thing I can say about myself. I am fortunate that I have great sponsors and um, great clients that support me, but it's, it's hard to get to this level without a lot of financial support, but there's a few riders, like one of my students, Kelsey, who, you know, works really hard every day and really studies the good riders, and I just think, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of horse you have, how much money you have, just really watch and really pay attention and take something from every, every rider. 
um, and just really study. That's it. That's great. Uh, Kelsey, if you could come over for a second, I'd just like to ask you how, how it's been learning from a Grand Prix rider and what's it like to train with her every day? Um, it's nice because I get to um, practice like the versatility of riding several different horses instead of one horse that I ride every day. I can go from equitation horses to riding and flatting her horses who are jumpers and then riding my horses again which are hunters so it's great to be able to go from one horse to another and be able to ride them instead of having to stick with one certain discipline. It definitely makes you a better rider. Um, and I would just like to thank you guys so much. I would like to give a little green apple to Polona for being such a good girl and being so patient with us today. Um, I'd love to do that. And um, I'm sure our viewers will be keeping their eyes out for Laura Bowery at the Hampton Classic this year, as well as the other Grand Prix riders. Once again, this is WVVH Hamptons Television, and I'm Sarah Haken.